The angler's name is Tim Ball. The fish he's holding is a 43-inch northern pike. Now, Tim didn't know he had a fish on the line. Then he thought it was a small fish. The whole thing is on home video, which we're gonna show you in just a few minutes. We have, the, the video is great. We have a story about ice fishing sleds, things you can make and things you can take if you wanna go ice fishing. Uh, a, a tremendous recipe for elegant elk chops by Jack Morrow, and we have a lot more. I want you to stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with some ideas on how you can become a more practical sportsman. Nothing on that one. Let's go down here to this one. Nope, nothing there. How about this one? Nope. How about that one? Nothing. Jeez, typical fishing day. Well, it might look like that now, but this is not going to be a typical fishing day. Far from it. Behind the camera is father-in-law Terry Ham. He and his son-in-law, Tim Ball, were fishing on New Year's Day, Croton Pond, Nuevo County. Underneath four inches of ice near shore is a four-inch sucker minnow, but apparently a pike had grabbed it. Oh, boy. Looks like maybe we got You want me to get the uh, thing out? Yeah. When Tim Ball got to the tip up, you could see he hadn't been standing on the ice. I mean, he wasn't dressed for it. They were watching the tip ups from shore, from someplace warm. And Tim was kind of disappointed. It didn't look like there was any motion on that tip up. I mean, he was kind of bummed out at this point. Don't look like it's moving yet, though. There ain't no line left on the spool. Oh, great. That's a lot of line out. I hope he didn't drop it. Is there a fish on there? There was. That's why it was, it was kind of tipped. Yeah. We'll find out, dear. Now Tim got to the bottom of the story. A sizable fish had pulled out all the line from that tip-up reel. On there. He took all that line out and it's not on there. Nothing on there, no. Holy crap. Oh, maybe there is. Yeah, there's something on there now. Oh, there it oh, is. He's... Nice one, too. We're going to need that scooper? No. What is it? Okay. We'll find out, dear. It feels big. It feels real big. I haven't got some match yet, so. <laughs> I got teeth, not in the line. Gotta peel it back out. It's a 10 pound walleye, that's what it is. There's a match. Well, we're getting there. Whoa, big pike. Big pike. Big pike? Big, big, big pike. You got TJ, come here. You're going to need, uh, think you'll be able to get it through the hole? Yeah. He's not that big, but he's, I'd say 30 inches or better. It's kind of like uh, Fred Trost would like to catch. Whoa, maybe he's 35. That's why all that line was out. I'm gonna have to go back to Johnny's. Whoa! Um, Is he off? No, but he... we're looking at a 20 pound pike here. A 20 pounder, eh? Not. Excuse the French on the tape, but... Ooh, I can't, I don't know if I can get him through the hole. That's what I mean. Just no, don't, let him play out till he's really... He is, he's talking maybe 40 now. You want me uh, get that? You got a gaff? Uh, why don't I go in and check, play with. He can't get it through the hole, I wouldn't mind. Let me see, I can, let me see what we can get here. Hold on. I think I can get him to the gill if I get his head in the hole again. And that's what you gotta do is get that head up there, but it's kind of sluggish. All right, 
back them off. He ain't hooked too good either. Has he got a gaff? He doesn't have a gaff, but... You should see this pike. Take your time, Tim. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that, Look at that pike! Holy smokes! Now this is fishing. Look at that puppy, huh? Woo! Super! Look at that! All right, Tim. Here. That is a pike. What do you think of that, T, huh? Is that a keeper? Tim even had a word for me as he held this monster. Charles, eat your heart out. And I tell you, when me and Tim fish, we fish. Well, thanks to Terry Ham and Tim Ball from Walker and their good home video, we could see how an 18-pound, 43-inch northern pike is caught through the ice. That was hardly a typical fishing day for these fellas. You know what it takes to catch a 43-inch pike besides luck? A tip-up. That's how that one was caught. Now, this is the simplest type of tip-up there is, just the old wooden tip-up variety. Now, the principle of a tip-up is these cross sticks uh, sit on top of the hole. The reel is underneath the water. So a fish pulls and it turns the reel. Well, now, how are you going to know whether there's a fish on the other end? This is why it's called a tip-up. It has a flag you pull up, you hook right onto here. Now, when a fish turns the reel like that, the flag pops up. That's a tip-up. So that's what was used, that the basic same type of tip-up uh, was used to catch that 43-inch pike. That's all you need. What do you put your tip-ups in? Put them in a bucket, take it out fishing. In fact, you see a lot of fishermen using buckets, flip them upside down and sit on them. And you know, those fishermen aren't the dyed-in-the-wool ice fishermen. Boy, I got one here. Right here, Gary Botek, my man, hunter, guide, and helping us out here uh, uh, with the Federation and all. But Gary, you have a collection of ice fishing sleds. Right. And in fact, you said you got to see some of these. This one belonged to who? My grandfather. An ice pal. Something that at one time you could buy these in stores in Michigan, no longer made. But this ice pal has two parts to it. This part comes off right there. And there's a little compartment where you can, you can store gear in. And this obviously was kind of machined. There's metal parts, wooden parts. Try to slip that back onto there. The oh, it also has, you could also put a lantern in there. Right. In fact, in the front of it, there's a, a little hole you can open up and tighten down with a nut on the inside, and that would let light out uh, so you could see what you're doing at night if you were ice fishing at night. During the day, it keeps it a little bit warmer. Now, trying to get this thing back on, this isn't the... It goes on higher. Yeah, it goes on a little difficult. Go. Now, there's another container here in the back where there's ice fishing gear. And your son uses this, Tony. Right. Okay, now this, this didn't come with this originally. No, Tony put that on. Okay, but that's to carry the ice fishing rods. Uh, right. A handy little deal. Now, the way you take... the, the the reason it's called a sled is because that's exactly what it is. This has runners on it that are actually just tube, metal tubes. And it has a rope on the front with a little tube around it. And you carry it out on the ice like that. Drag it behind yourself. Real handy. Now, when you get out there, you, you, you can sit on it. This is what it's designed for. Sure. But, you know, normally, Gary, you sit on this end of it and warm your hands on you know, under the lantern. Um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering, who in your family has had a rear end that can fit in that? Tony. You're, Tony? <laughs> He's okay. the only one. <laughs> that, how old is he? Uh, 16. 16, okay. This is for a 16-year-old Fanny right here. Now let's talk about some ice fishing sleds, some bigger ones here that uh, you have made. You made this one, Gary. Right. You can buy a sled, something like this, at the store. In fact, you copied this off of a... Right. I bought a sled just like it, and then I 
basically it's the same look on the outside, but I made some alterations on the inside. Okay. Now let, let's, of course, this sled has um, skis. Right. I Plastic bought those at a garage sale. Garage sale skis on the bottom, and so you can pull it with the rope out on the ice. Now, of course, Gary says, sometimes I have to walk over some ice mounds or up a hill, so I put a strap on it, throw it over his shoulder, and you can carry it. Just an old seat belt. It's an old seat belt, right. fairly, fairly lightweight. Now, you've done some metal work on this. There are two parts, basically, to what I would consider the ideal ice fishing sled. One is the part you sit on right here. This is a carpeted compartment. We're going to get into that in a moment. The other is this compartment that's a little taller where you can put gear in it along with your lantern. Right. You have a lot of lanterns. A few of them. You have a lot of guns. A few of them. You got a lot of fishing poles. You got a lot of everything. But this is one of them. Then the lantern goes down inside. You light it, put it down inside, and it kicks out heat. It not only kicks out heat, but here in the front there's a little plexiglass so at night you know, it shines out in front of you. And how do you keep warm? Well, as you sit on this, there's some wire right in here, and the heat from the lantern comes up and keeps your hands warm. So that's a pretty slick idea. Let's get into, since this is one of your original sleds, look at this. Now, the guy thinks. Guy's always thinking. This rod holder on the back has three ice fishing rods on it with a rubber band around it. I mean, how many times, if you don't have a rubber band, sometimes it can slip out and you'd have to go back and find it. Yeah, or get your line tangled up on some twigs or something if you're walking back to a lake that's going through some woods. Sure, but this, uh, this is set to hold the handles. That holds the rods. Now let's get inside. Let's see what the well-equipped ice fisherman has. I told you Gary has a lot of guns, a lot of rods. You also have a lot of weight clips. Holy cow, you got a half dozen of them here. Clip on your line to see how deep the... Right. Usually everybody ends up losing them, so they come to me for something. Also have a couple hemostats in here. And this is one thing that's used to take the hook out of fish, these little hemostats, and you clip those right into that wire, and they stay there. Let's see what else we have. Oh, here's the old famous Happy D hooker. That baby, you can slide down and get your fish off. We're going to start going through these. Wool gloves, you like wool best? Right. Okay, Keeps we got warm. a rag. Keep your hands cleaned off when they're wet. Okay, so you wipe your hands off. Oh, look at this device for the guy who has everything. Huh? How do you like that, John? I like it, I like it. <laughs> I'd like to use it more often. Yeah, this is for like uh, those big pike. Now that guy could have used that. Oh, I would have helped him out quite a bit. On that 43 inch pike, put it down on there and grab that pike and pulled him up out of the water. So that's another thing you keep in here. Now we have all kinds of little containers. Oh, there's more ice flies here. There's a lifetime's worth. There's for, a couple more of them in there, too. Jeez, oh, Pete, look at all of these. Different colors, different sizes, called teardrops. These are all basically right. teardrop boxes right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we're into a... This is a handy type of, of tackle box to carry. I don't, I'm not even going to... We could spend a whole show going through everything you've got in here. But I, I see you have uh, clothes pins... Uh, lighters, mantles, mantles for the light, mantles X for the lantern. Now let's get into here's something that uh, that you can put on your feet if you're a little unsteady. Like John, have you ever been unsteady on the ice with that camera? <laughs> I've been on the ice with the camera. Before. Yeah, it's been on the ice, <laughs> falling down. There's different types. This is this one right here is made by what does it say here? Action Lure. These are the ones that you have found to be the best. They were great. You take these and you clip these around your boots. We'll show you out on the ice uh, how these things work. But clip on your boots so you don't slip if there's not snow on the ice and if it's really slick. Oh, there's all kinds of other things in here. You have needle nose pliers, extra fishing line. Golly, Gary, you have... What do we got here? It looks kind of weird, but uh, if somebody falls through, um, this could save your life. It's just a piece of rope and a couple of big washers. Washers to throw it up to a person and they can stick their hand in it and you can pull them out of the water. Hmm. I, like I said, it looks a little weird, but I thoroughly believe in carrying things like that. Carrying things like that. You also have here my spikes. These are spikes. Now these are these are just big nails, big spikes. 
Of course, Gary put electrician's tape around it. He's got to improve everything. He doesn't care what it is. He's going to improve <laughs> it. But these spikes are used. How would you use them? What, what um, would you put them and how would you use them? Well, I wear car hard cover hauls, and there's usually some pouches, and I just stick them right here so I can get at them quick. But then what for? What are you going to use spikes for? Well, if you do happen to fall in the water and you are lucky enough to hang on to the edge, if you pull, you know, take one out at a time, you can pull yourself out of the hole usually. They okay, work real so well. You don't keep these in this box. You put them on your right, body right. Uh, somewhere where they're real handy. <laughs> All kinds of other stuff in here. What do we have here? It says, uh, take one tablet twice daily. Those are matches. <laughs> I know. These are matches for lighting the lantern or maybe building a fire or whatever you might need. All kinds of things in here. And this seat flops down and it's covered with uh, carpeting, which makes it real nice to sit on. Now, let's see. There's one other thing. Do you have that clip there handy? Sure. That goes I'm going to take one of the rods. Gary has a put right here. You can get a close up on this, John. What are these things? It's you buy them in a hardware store. Um, they hold brooms on your wall or rakes in your garage or yeah. you know shovels and such. Yeah, you know how you put the broom in there? Look at this. Put the fishing rod in there. So while you're fishing, you're warm from the lantern. It's kicking out light here as it gets a little dark, and this one. You could even rock back and forth on a little bit. Give that little jigging action. It works. What a deal. All things that you can make. Now, this is a practical show. Right. Right? Okay, we have something here. We've had a lot of requests from people about what they can do to build things like this. And let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Here is an original design by Gary Botek for an ice fishing sled. This is all made of wood. It uh, sit right here. It has the two little clamps here to put the brooms on so you can have your fishing rods. Open this up. Look at this, John. It has a deal to, to put your lantern oh, okay. in there so it doesn't you know, fall over. over. Plexiglass in the front. Insulation around here so it's warmer. And that's just a heater duct, right? Right. And this looks, it, does, it isn't going to take a... Uh, you know, Bob Vila type, this old house person. Not at all. Uh, to build it. Oh, another handy thing. This is a rod holder. Is this a special rod holder? Or no, a... it's just PCV pipe. You buy it in any hardware store or lumber company. There you go. Put your fishing rod in there if you want to warm your hands as you're fishing. All kinds of gadgets and ideas. Now, I'm going to get off of this here. We're going to look in the, the compartment where you keep your gear. You really don't have much in here right now, but he has a couple little compartments uh, to put things in. You say you could also heat up some food. Sandwiches, yeah. It gets pretty warm on there. <laughs> and you put the rod holder in the back. Right. And you got more room for gear, ice scoops and so on. Or put your fish in there if you want. Or the fish. The handle on the front to pull it like a sled. Are you satisfied with these two by four? No, I'm going to put some skis on them, just like the ones that are on the other sled there. The I plastic just have, skis. Right. I haven't had a chance to. You just to haven't it. found the right garage sale yet. Right. <laughs> okay. So anyway, and you have handles. Pick it up, carry it, set it in the back of your truck. What we're going to do, if you don't mind, Gary, you, don't, you didn't put a patent on this, did you? No, not at all. Okay. Well, come in here. We can... How about if we put this in the next issue of our Practical Sportsman magazine and lay out the plans for this? It's fine with me. How much suppose it would cost for somebody to build this? I, I figured it out one time. Um, you don't have to use, you know, a fancy you know, heater duct here. Um, you could build one of these for probably under $25. Ooh, not much money. That would make a no. great gift. Right. Just It's a little time consuming. Time consuming. Hey, do we have time this winter or what? This there you is go. great. Well, this is what... Uh, what Gary Botek uses, he has different ice fishing sleds, different gear. We're going to talk about different rods and things in the future. What we're going to try to do at the end of this program, if we have time, I'm not sure we're going to have time, but you're going to take us fishing because you said that you can deliver fish. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> you said you can deliver fish. We'll, we'll, we'll try, Fred. You're Gary, backing down on me, Gary. No, I won't back down on you. Gary, you said you could deliver fish. Uh, no, I didn't. We, we'll catch fish. I just don't know what size yet. <laughs> okay. The guide report is a little iffy. We'll get on to that. Thanks, Gary. 
Thanks, we're gonna sir. we're gonna do some fishing with this equipment and look for this in the February March. The plans for this in the February March edition of the Practical Sportsman magazine. What we're eating here is a stuffed chop. Now this is has some dressing inside. Uh, this recipe is elegant elk chops. Now if you know anything about elk, you look at this meat, you say baloney. That's <laughs> not elk. This is white meat. Jack Morrow from Frankenmuth submitted this recipe to us, which is a terrific recipe. What's this white meat elk business? Albino elk? No. You're not buying that, huh? No, I'm not <laughs> buying that. <laughs> These are pork chops, and uh, at the time that uh, the, I was told about the recipe having to be here and so forth, I didn't have time to get any venison out. and uh, Like yesterday. And I was, yeah, and I was out of elk, and so therefore uh, I had a dash to the store and get some extra thick uh, pork chops to do this with. Okay, so what you did is you take the chop, uh, you take a thick chop, slice it in the middle up to the bone. Right. And stuff it. Yep. And these are the ingredients. We have ingredients over here, um, a, a bunch of different ones, but the stuffing that you have it has mainly what in it? It has uh, croutons, uh, garlic, onion, um, green olives, celery, uh, and some uh, crab meat. Some hmm. art I've used artificial crab meat. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is what you call, what Renee calls... Crab with a K. Crab with a K. <laughs> That's right. By the way, this is Renee Hall. If you ever call Practical Sportsman, chances are 95% who's going to answer the phone? That'd be me. That would be Renee. Okay, so we had her taste this recipe. She's game for all types of things. I'm going to try some of this stuffing. You're it's cold. Like that? You're going to like that. Mmm. Mmm. Good olives. Mmm. Mmm. Two pounds of garlic. Mm. <laughs> Good. Don't well, read on anybody this afternoon. Well, I know. There's, you put a lot of garlic in there. You also have um, some sherry. One tablespoon is all that's required. I used a little more, and then, of course, being the cook, I sampled the sherry beforehand to make sure it was the proper stuff to use. But one Pretty tablespoon good. is all you need for the recipe. Yes. I think we get the picture. Okay, well, let's try this, Renee. I know you've been digging into this. This is with pork rather than with elk or venison. And people are constantly asking, do I have to use an elk recipe for elk, a deer recipe with deer? What do you think? No. Uh, you cook your wild game uh, with a recipe that's a conventional recipe, and you get a great tasting dish. If you try to cover everything up, it just doesn't mm -hmm. turn out right. And this is excellent. Boy, it is. The pork I chops, like good. you know, it doesn't taste like porky pork chops, does it, mm -hmm. Renee? No, it's really, really good. That stuffing really makes it. What are your tips, Jack, on somebody cooking this, no matter what kind of meat they use? The, uh, I think probably it's the it has to go along with the person's taste. I use a little more garlic. I use two cloves of garlic. The recipe calls for one. I used a little extra sherry. It calls for one tablespoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and I use zesty Italian uh, croutons rather than the regular croutons. Uh, salt and pepper to taste. It, it's an excellent dish. Uh, I like it. It's, I think it's a good dish anyway. Maybe not excellent, but it's good. <laughs> Maybe not excellent. Let's have a vote. Jack says good. I say great. I say excellent. That's the jury. <laughs> you win. Hey, thank you. Thank Jack. you. This was great. It was a pleasure. Well, let's finish this, Renee. Okay. Mm. This extremely versatile and excellent elegant elk or pork chop recipe is in the inaugural issue of the Practical Sportsman magazine. The address where you can get a hold of, of it is coming up at the end of the show. Now, I got to tell you, we're outside right now to finish this show. We have one scene. We don't know how much battery we have left. We have had a day here, this is Wednesday afternoon after this horrendous snowstorm. The power is out in this end of town, in, in Bath, and our building, the museum, the office, no telephone, no nothing. So we're lucky to have some batteries. Thank you, WCMU, for the, uh, the camera and the use of this with the battery pack. This snow on the ice right now in the lakes around the state is not good news. The ice has been relatively thin. The snow on top will probably be melting. There's going to be a lot of slop out there, a lot of wetness. The conditions are not safe in many areas. We're withholding our ice fishing for a few days at least until things firm up. So that's the scoop. Boy, this is adverse conditions. I want to thank WCMU for the camera. I want to thank WKAR and East Lansing for editing facilities. And I want to thank the good Lord for leaving us some light at the end of the day so we could finish this show. We'll see you next week.